I'm Oscar Camara, a full professor in biomedical engineering at Universitat Pompeu Fabra. I'm working on Syncario Test, a project funded by the European Commission, and I'm the leader of use case two on left atrial appendix devices. While in patients with non valvular atrial fibrillation, uh, that they have contraindications to oral anticoagulants, a valid alternative is the implementation of a device in the left atrial appendage because 99% of the thrombus related to atrial fibrillation are generated in this structure. Well, the thing is that the left atrial appendage occluded devices, they have a lot of different shapes, a lot of different size and sizes, and they can be implanted in different positions. And, and if a device is not implanted in an optimal way, it can lead to problems after the intervention, like the device embolization, device related thrombus. So in silico models that simulate the blood flow patterns in the left atria, they can really contribute to determine which are the device configurations that have a lower risk for the patient. But the problem and the challenge is that there is a lack of rigorous studies of verification, validation, and sensitivity quantification in the literature on this type of simulations. The thing is, uh, well, the general approach that we have is based on really performing this verification and validation studies of this type of fluid simulations following the VMV40 guidelines. I mean, this is going to allow us to build the credibility that we need for these models to create in silico trials that are part of the device regulatory and certification processes. So specifically in, in SimCardio tests, what we are going to do is just to generate a large virtual cohort of simulations that will be connected to the in silico clinical trials platform that needs to be developed in, in SIM cardio test. Within the Universitat Pompeu Fabra, where I lead our contributions on the patient-specific fluid modeling of the left atria and the application of advanced machine learning techniques for patient phenotype. Well, beyond UPF, in, in SIM cardio test, the main partners involved in, in the work on left atrial appendage, Simula, Boston Scientific, and in silico trials, but we have contributions also from other partners like INRIA and, and Universitat Politecnica de Valencia. So Simula is in charge of verification studies of, of left actual based fluid simulations because they have a lot of experience on numerics and, and they perform detailed sensitivity analysis to find which are the set of optimal model parameters and boundary conditions to create the most realistic simulations. Boston Scientific is one of the largest uh, device manufacturers in this field, and they have a lot of expertise on the devices, obviously, and on the VMV40 guidance. So they are key to really understand which are the needs and the requirements and how in silico models can help them uh, together with in silico trials uh, to develop better devices. Uh, in silico trials, I mean, he, they are in charge of the link between the, the fluid simulations and the, the in silico trials platform to be developed in SIM cardio tests. And, and as I was saying, well, we are now performing sensitivity analysis uh, to assess the influence of the important parameters and boundary conditions. We are trying to see uh, how the movement of the left actual world is important, the resolution of the meshes, time steps, the number of bits to be simulated. And we are doing it with 2D benchmark studies that we can then compare with uh, studies in the literature, but we will develop also in vitro experiments to complement uh, our analysis. The next step is going to perform the, the in vitro experiments for further verification of, of our fluid simulations, but also part of the validation, validate our simulation results with the large clinical database that is available in SimCardio test, thanks to uh, the, the partner uh, in Bordeaux. We also need to start uh, to create the large virtual cohort of simulations to be connected to the Insilico trials platform. But I'm confident that in a period of five years, fluid simulations will be required and a standard for the certification of the of this type of, of devices 
as it's now the case for other devices like, like a stance. Fluid simulations, uh, that they are realistic. They can be used by the industry manufacturers to create better devices and to give better indications to the clinicians to implant better, better and more personalized devices. Really better clinical decisions and having better prognosis, uh, less adverse events, and better quality of life when they have some of these devices implanted. Obviously, We are very lucky to have such a complete consortium because we have uh, all the stakeholders involved around the three different uh, use cases, including industry, including uh, leaders, uh, medical leaders, uh, of these kind of different therapies and also academic researchers with experience, a lot of experience in, in this type of computational tools. I think it's quite a unique uh, consortium to really uh, make progress on, on, on the modeling of, of the different use cases and bring them closer to the needs of industry than to help the patient. We see how important is technology and, and the computational techniques like in silicon models, machine learning, also in collaboration with visual analytics, advanced interfaces that can provide clinicians more information to have more robust medical decisions. But obviously this can be done only within the context of multidisciplinary teams including biomedical engineers and other type of, of professionals working together and even in the hospital as part of a large team.